Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the uh, Town of Carabasset Valley, Carabasset Valley Annual Town Meeting, but it's an abbreviated version this year with COVID. We've had to change the annual town meeting from an open style to a secret ballot referendum requiring a public hearing. Most importantly, absentee ballots will be available at the town office to vote on the 22 articles in the, in the town meeting. Um, and they're a stat on page 35 on our town meeting booklet. Um, it's also on the town website now. But the absentee ballots will be available tomorrow. Um, get them, fill them out at your leisure, and uh, turn them in in time for April 14th. Uh, on April 14th, we will have the polls will open for the voting of town officials, and the town meeting ballot referendum will take place right here in the town office from 8 to 6. Any questions from the Board of Selectmen? With that, I will turn it over to Dave to go through the uh, budget items. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, as Bob indicated, the entire budget uh, is in the town report, uh, which is on the town website. Uh, and if you go to page 35, the town budget uh, starts there. So you can look at the entire town budget. Uh, and so what I'm going to do right now is really, it, it would take forever to go through this entire town budget. This budget is being recommended by the entire uh, <clears throat> budget committee, which consists of five of the selectmen and seven, seven citizens. So it's been reviewed by the budget committee and recommended. Uh, and you can see that entire budget, and we're going to walk through it very quickly here in a minute. Uh, in the town report, uh, which is on the town website, uh, as is Bob indicated, uh, the, the town warrant. Now the town warrant, we're going to get to in a minute also after this, and it's only got 22 warrant articles this year instead of the usual 60-something. Uh, obviously thinking that if you walk into the, the booth and or if you take uh, home a ballot that, you know, we, we tried to consolidate things this year. So as Bob indicated, the actual town meeting itself is a referendum style town meeting, which is going to be on April 14th. Polls will be open from 6 to 8 to vote on all town officials and the 22 warrant article. So having said that, what we're going to do now, I'm just going to do an overview of the entire budget so you can understand what's going on, but I've explained it uh, in the town report, in my report, my annual report to the town. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, we're just going to just very briefly go through some of the important things in the, in the, uh, in the warrant. Again, what we don't want to do, so that you can see some of the highlights. Uh, so as far as the total municipal appropriations, uh, if you look right here, you'll see this in your town meeting, in your town book. I, I may have added this later, but having said that, Total town municipal appropriations this year are two, uh, two million six hundred and sixty. That is a one percent, one point six percent increase over last year. If you look at going back to two thousand and eighteen, the total town appropriations were two million five hundred seventy-two thousand and change. That's a four. So this year is a three point four percent increase over the entire th entire three years. Just to point that out. So. Uh, no significant uh, increase uh, in town appropriations. However, we have seen a dramatic increase uh, in our school enrollment, which I'm going to explain here in a minute. But then I, I'll explain the overall budget and then go back and just kind of hit the highlights. There are some different things we're doing this year as compared with, with uh, previous years. So having said that, um, that's what the total municipal appropriations are. We're going to talk about those in a minute. Uh, in, in more detail, and this is the school budget, which I just want to show, and it's not finalized. The school, just so that people understand, there's perhaps a lot of people watching here may not understand this, but the town tuitions, tuitions students. We don't own a school system, which means that we pay tuition for all of our K through 8 students that either go to uh, Kingfield uh, or Stratton schools, and we pay based on their per pupil cost. High school, we pay based on a state, uh, uh, a state average uh, figure that is given to us. 
So we tuition, we pay tuition for all of our kids. And the school budget is, is, is put together by the school committee. They're on a different fiscal year than they are. And there's usually a town meeting uh, that takes place in late May or June uh, for, the town, for the education budget, for the, for the school budget. So that needs to take place, or will take place in the future. Having said that, uh, we have had some preliminary numbers, as we always do every year, from the school superintendent and the school committee. And it's still early, but basically uh, we are looking at, I just because it's important to understand the overall budget, you're not voting on this in April 14th or on the absentee ballots, but just to have an understanding of what's going on, I, I, it, it would be useful for you to know. See, this is your education expenses. They're increasing uh, this year because of the, we've, we've gone from slightly under 50 total students to almost 80. Uh, that's a 60% increase in the number of students. So it's, it's dramatic. And that's reflected in the budget. That school budget is increasing, the total of expenses is increasing 33.6% uh, or a little over uh, $3.5 million. In addition to that, unfortunately, there's not a lot of school surplus left over. So. Uh, normally we have that. We believe there'll be some, but that's up to the school committee to decide just how much of that surplus is used against the tax commitment. But having said that, uh, it was 260000 last year, and again, this, this model, whatever you want to call it, uh, estimate is based on zero. Now that may change. Uh, and so having said that, there would be a significant net increase in the school budget that would go from 82%, 1.4 million in change to from 800,000. That's a significant increase. Fortunately, or because of how you look at it, we have a different fiscal year than the school. Only half of that would be appropriated for this year. But it's still a significant increase. Now, when we go a little further with this, uh, just for informational purposes, we pay an assessment to Franklin County. That assessment, as you can see, has been growing uh, kind of steadily. Uh, out of 21 towns in Franklin County, Carabasset Valley pays, has the highest state valuation, which means we pay the most money for our county assessment. And it's been growing up larger than the county budget percentage-wise is because our valuation has been going higher than the other town, percentage-wise, higher than the other towns in the county. So that enters into this also and that we anticipate that to be close to 900,000. Having said that, when you add it all up, uh, down at the bottom here, we have been very fortunate to have a very low mill rate for a number of years here. In fact, if you, even if you go back before 2018, it's been about $6.50 uh, $6 a thousand. Uh, and it was again last year, but we anticipate it could go as, as, as high you know, again, not knowing exactly what the school budget was, seven point four dollars, seven dollars and forty cents a thousand. Well, that's about a close to a fourteen percent increase. So, if we had to guess at this time, you would be, you would see a bump in your taxes this year. But again, the, the mill rate, this mill rate, st still stays relatively low compared to a lot of communities. So that's the overall part of this budget. Now, what I'm going to do, what we'd like to do, is just go through. Uh, very briefly, some of the highlights, again, of the municipal budget. Again, the municipal budget, the appropriations are only, uh, are increasing 1.6% this year, but there are some different things uh, that we're doing this year to try to accommodate, uh, trying to sort of t uh, eliminate as much as we can and, and make the, you know, the mill rate be reasonable. So what you see up here is important is that we go across, and you'll see this in town report, we, you got four years of budgeting right here, so that you can see compared uh, to previous years, and this is the, this is the current uh, request. So and we'll go down through here. This is the uh, salaries for municipal government. This is town office expenses. Now, one of the things that is increasing is legal fees. <clears throat> we have historically have not budgeted much money for legal fees. Uh, we've gone up this 30000 this year. Um, it's the, the board feels, the selectmen feel it's necessary to budget to have <coughs> uh, legal representation uh, concerning potential up, uh, uh, pending 
uh, state legislation uh, involving rather dramatic changes uh, to the 1980 Indian Lands Claim Settlement that could have a substantial impact on the town. And it's very important. I want to get into a lot of details of that. I've explained it in my report, in the town report. Uh, we're being very respectful in this process, but it's, it does have some substantial, could have some substantial impacts for the town, again, that I've explained uh, in the article in the town report. Again, it's on the town website if you wish to view that. So that is a big, a significant increase in the budget, in the town budget. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with some of this stuff. Much is, a lot of this is very similar to previous years. <clears throat> we have tax assessing expenses. We have code enforcement office uh, expenses. <clears throat> As most towns do, we have planning board expenses. We do uh, hire uh, AVCOG. Uh, it's a tri-county <coughs> council of governments uh, that provides services to all the towns in those tri-counties. And again, some of that's based on our state valuation, and we, we pay them dues. Selectmen's expenses and town donations. We spend the selectmen decide every year to give money to events, whether it's the Sugar Loaf Marathon, whether it's POPs, or and various uh, public service organizations. Uh, and that's uh, based. Uh, we the, the board makes decisions uh, rather than have about 15 more articles to say if the town wants to prove all of these various organizations. The town <coughs> has has always handled it this way. On, and let the selectmen who know who deal with this and the town manager as to what agency should be funded uh, and those that are appropriate for the town. We have Obviously, we have a police department that we fund. Uh, I think we're down a little bit this year because of training. Uh, uh, right here, we've got a, a sizable balance forward that you're not seeing here that we're asking to carry forward. Uh, so that's why it is. And this is your communication center. This is uh, <coughs> the town's uh, portion of that. <coughs> this is over a $500,000 operation. The town pays this much of that. Uh, there are other revenues for monitoring fees from uh, uh, people who have their homes monitoring. Uh, That's a fairly significant part of this. And then I think the, there's a, condo owners get a believe uh, uh, they pay a fee also uh, for the enhanced uh, uh, security that, they, that they're getting. Uh, in the fire department, we are there is a, uh, we have increased the fire chief salary uh, to be commensurate with uh, his job description, which has changed. He's also the emergency management director. Uh, the board of selectmen have approved the job description for that, and obviously uh, he is in care of all the, of the new fire station also. So we felt that that was very deserving and needed uh, for all that uh, that person does. Uh, fire department equipment reserve. We've got over four hundred thousand dollars in this reserve, so it's felt that we could take a year or two off and kind of try to absorb uh, some uh, to help uh, with the uh, you know uh, with the tax increase due due to to school and also the the debt service on the new fire station. We're operating a new fire station, so that amount. Uh, is the best guess at about uh, twenty-one, twenty thousand dollars. It does include a five, a five thousand uh, dollar reserve also. And, and uh, after a year of operation, we'll have that includes plowing, plowing, uh, plowing it out. We put that, you know, we ask for quotes, and those are the kind of price. That's the kind of pricing that we get. So to plow out that entire lot. North Star subsidy. This is North Star EMS. That's your ambulance service. Uh, <clears throat> and the town, we pay a portion of that subsidy uh, that's not paid for uh, through user fees and through insurance. So uh, obviously we all know this is an incredibly vital service to the community. <coughs> Animal control, we, we paid less for that in recent years, and uh, so that's that. Insurance accounts, these are all of the town's insurance accounts. Uh, that we, uh, that's property insurance, uh, general liability insurance, and. Uh, Law enforcement, uh, aviation insurance, and uh, uh, vehicle insurance, all that good stuff. So, uh, having said, said that, we uh, these are the recreation accounts, uh, seventy-four thousand, pretty consistent. We are paying a little bit less for some time because we've got a balance forward. We didn't have a full program last summer, so we had a, a fairly significant balance forward that we're able to uh, then try to keep this amount of the appropriations down. We should have plenty to operate. Uh, incredible program. Hopefully, given COVID, we can get back to a full program. It's a very popular program. 
uh, anti-gravity center. Uh, nothing really new there. We are now putting money in a capital reserve. This is matched by CBA uh, that goes into a capital reserve account for capital expenses related to the uh, anti-gravity center. This is kind of a big increase. The narrow gauge pathway maintenance, uh, we are also asking to put FEMA money that we received uh, into a reserve account because at some point we're going to have, uh, whether it's that big walkway bridge up there or, or other hopefully not catastrophic <laughs> events. We had two small floods there last year, they're about $3,000 a piece. What we're also doing here, and I think people realize it, is that we're doing a much uh, a higher level of maintenance on the narrow gauge, especially in terms of grooming. The narrow gauge, as most of you know, that users have seen a tremendous increase in usage, and I think it's been really appreciated that the level of grooming has improved, and people have really appreciated it. But it costs money, so that's that's what's going on there. Uh, let's see if I can get this thing to move. <laughs> library operations? That's just library operations. That's not the building. Uh, because we obviously pay a full-time club. Uh, uh, a librarian and insurance, telephone, special events, uh, all that, all that stuff. Uh, not much of a difference there. You can see from one year to the next. Uh, community building expenses. This is the actual for the actual community center building. Uh, we did add a capital maintenance reserve for that. What we've been doing, and we do have some improvements to make that, particularly with that log facade that's in front of the building. Uh, we made some improvements last year. It's, it's, it's rotting because of water uh, issues, and so we're going to be making some more improvements to firm that up, and we need some more money in there to uh, hopefully uh, divert some water away from it uh, and, and, and preserve that beautiful water facade. Airport operation, uh, as we did last year, we're recommending putting 10000 into a cap airport capital projects. Uh, and that would eventually fund uh, a, a tech new taxi lane project. Now, the, vote, the town would need to make a vote in the future to approve that project. So, but, but what we're trying to do is put some money aside in the eventuality that that project happens. We've got a long list, 13 folks that we want to build hangars at the airport. So this project would help facilitate uh, eight, uh, eight new T hangers and three new Hangers. The town would receive taxes on these buildings and also a land lease fee. Um, we've actually done pretty well. I'm not showing it here, but we're not, yeah, right here. We're not spending any money for the fuel farm expenses. We're actually finally making money there, so that's been a good thing. And as time goes on, uh, that, the, that, that money will contribute towards the expenses at the airport. Road maintenance accounts, uh, pretty steady. Uh, some of this, just to point out, this is the carriage road. We pay uh, to maintain the carriage road in the summer months uh, through a, a agreement with the Pondstadt Indian Nation. We're obviously hopeful that uh, that arrangement can, can continue. Uh, we also pay, and it's uh, part of our road plowing contracts, is with 2.4 miles of road we have to pay to plow on the on the road that goes out to Long the, Falls Dam. the Long Falls Dam Road. Thank you very much. And we get 2.4 miles of that. And we pay the county, the Somerset County, for a portion of that plowing cost. About $18,000 of that, $52,000. <clears> Transportation program, that's an, an $800,000 project, uh, uh, operating budget, and it's it is hugely popular. Popular. The town pays 140000 towards that, as does Sugarloaf. Sugarloaf pays $140,000, matches the town's amount in that. Uh, and then we're able to, uh, there's an enhanced program on the mountain, and uh, the condo is pay $40 a piece for a very enhanced program. Uh, and in addition to that, we're able to get state and federal funds. So, and that's run by Western Maine uh, Transportation. So, again, a very popular program, and another collaboration that this town does. Transfer station, <coughs> we reduced that by 30,000, well, here anyway, in terms of the reserve, because we've got money to buy new back up there, which we need to do. So that, that kind of helped a little bit. Uh, <coughs> these are the recycling, uh, uh, recycling budgets, only about 12 grand. It does cost money to recycle. You know, it almost costs actually more. It's an awful thing to say than, than it does to throw it in the garbage. But 
people are adamant they want to recycle, and I understand that, because, you know, it's a great thing. So we, we continue to keep that program going. Hopefully someday there'll be more long-term answers <coughs> uh, towards making that cost-effective. Debt service. Okay, these are all the debt service payments that the town makes. We also get a significant amount of this, some of this, uh, contributions from Sugarloaf for some of these projects. Uh, the golf course, uh, Clubhouse Golden One, for instance, they pay 37.5%. <coughs> um, communication, no, that's gone now. Uh, and let's see what else. And the irrigation project, which is a lot, they pay a similar amount, 47000 for the town share of that also. And they also are contributing towards a five year bond uh, that's going to expire in another year. And here's the new five station bond, 74000 So. Uh, we, again, we're close here, though, nevertheless, and that's because we're not funding the fire department ladder truck bond this year, which is paid off. And as uh, the original town lot bond that is now paid off, we did pick up the debt service on the Jones lot, which is right here. So that's uh, so again, we, that's we're fortunate. Some some retired debt and uh, some. Uh, some going, uh, some new, some new debt going forward. Uh, employee benefit requirements are much the same they were last year. Social Security, means every time, all workman's compensation, which were required. Uh, we self-fund our employment. That did take a jump this year, as many businesses saw happen. Uh, so the Social Security, which we are required to pay. So uh, other accounts. Uh, these. Uh, uh, some of these are contributions to, for instance, uh, the Information Center, Flagstaff, uh, area business. Uh, they have asked for an additional five thousand uh, uh, to uh, to continue their operation there at the at the Information Center. The town does pay to operate the Information. We pay we pay the heat and <coughs> electricity, uh, just general expenses to operate that also. And this, this key, uh, the ski the. The, the uh, Sugarloaf Ski Club, uh, we give them $15,000 a year uh, for, to, to aid in their scholarship program. This is the town scholarship pro program right here. Uh, that we, uh, The town is very fortunate to be able to help fund uh, seniors. They have, there's a five year residency required for that. Uh, that uh, and, and they get uh, so much, it's been anywhere from 1500 to 2000 a year and for graduates. Uh, 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 from uh, local schools. Uh, so those are some things. Uh, let's see here. Capital maintenance. Uh, this is golf course reserve, 10000 That's matched by Sugarloaf. Uh, clubhouse is the, uh, the, the major capital expense is, 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 uh, is the town's responsibility. Recreation endowment fund, which the town puts, puts money into. And we raise, and we, and with the various clubs that, that ask for matching grants, those this year I think they they, they come to just, just under 40000 40, What's our current balance, Dave? Uh, the current balance in that? $340,000. 340, yeah, it's in the town report. I did yep. put a whole page in here, dip, uh, <coughs> incidentally, uh, showing all of the town's reserves. And take the time to read that. With the, you know, we're very pleased to have those reserves uh, going forward. Uh, very yeah. pleased. And, and it's all in the town report here. Uh, we're very fortunate. Three hundred and forty-one thousand. Three hundred. You're pretty close, Lloyd. Yeah, Thank you. Know. Three hundred and forty-one thousand. Yeah. Great economic driver for this community. Yeah, absolutely. It really is, and uh, you're absolutely right, Nate. Because this is matching money. The, the organizations that want to get money for this has to be recreation based, and they have to match it. Whatever the request is, ATV club. At, at times, the snowmobile club, uh, the mountain bike uh, trail program, uh, other entities, the shooting range, CBOA. So and on we, and on and yeah, on. Yeah, on and on and on. And it's really, and, it's, and it has to be matched. Uh, so it's been, the town set this up a long time ago. And the town fathers going way back from what they were doing. Been an incredible program. Town and the to, cell tower revenue. Yes, and the it. cell town revenues that we, about 14 a year that we get from the cell tower to transfer station, town property. This also goes into this fund. There's a warrant article in here to ask to, that that continue. Uh, new town comprehensive plan. We put 15 in this year. We need 15. It's probably a $45,000 project, so we will need to continue that. We're also assisting again with the history committee expenses. We also contribute, as, as three or four other uh, the bigger towns in the county do, to its Franklin Greater Franklin Development Corporation, uh, Rangeley, I believe, Farmington, and and. Uh, 
uh, will to contribute to this to this program also. It's kind of a benefit for the entire county, but the town has been generous in supporting that program. I mean, had some trails. Now, this 5,000 is just for trail me, to help them. Everybody uses their trails. So this is just to help them groom their trails, maintain their trails that the whole public is using. Uh, so again, that, so we're back to the total municipal appropriations, uh, which I previously discussed at 2.6. So that's kind of the highlights of the, of the budget. Um, and then that sort of uh, <coughs> moves into the area and, and follows uh, the, uh, the uh, town warrant, which you will be voting on. Um, and that, uh, we can walk through that. Bob, if you want to mm -hmm. start that process. Uh, so there are 22 warrant articles uh, in the budget. In, in the town meeting, this is much different than the past when we had almost 60. As Bob pointed out, the town, off the, the town meeting itself is going to be April 14, 8 to 6 to vote, as, as opposed to an open town meeting. Uh, but you can vote, as Lloyd indicated, by absentee starting tomorrow on March 16th. You, you can take it home with you, vote on them, look at the budget, return the ballot. Uh, it has to be in by 8 o'clock. <laughs> I think the phone... Oh, okay, you can all vote the bathroom now. Yeah, we will have to take a, take a quick break and uh, re-up the phone here, I think. No, no. No? no. The one person that was on there got done. One person that got on it got done, so now we got music. <laughs> hey, Andy, how many you have on? Can you tell? Twelve. How many? Twelve. Twelve. We have people on TV that are uh, yeah. watching this uh, on, on computer, but nobody that's... I've done. I've done. Apparently I've done. nobody is, so is on. Maybe one of us should call from our cell phone. Well, call from the town office. Yes. Somebody call in. Yeah, so we stop the music in. by, uh, <laughs> see if I can So the music stops. Yeah, you keep talking. I'll keep talking on the budget and we'll go and call in so we're not listening to music, so. <laughs> <laughs> so again, as Bob indicated, uh, that's that's the process involved this year because it's very different with COVID, so we have a referendum style town meeting now. So we start out 8 in the morning uh, on the 14th of April. We elect the moderator and then all the necessary town officials and then uh, all of the budget items that we just talked about. Now, the, the normal things that we vote on every year. Now, I'm, I'm going to walk through this pretty quickly because I've just walked through that budget with you. And again, the entire budget is in the town is in the town report. So, having said that, um, and then these are the usual things. We go into the new year and we off, we uh, ask to to expand one fourth of the previous uh, annual budget uh, from the period of the of the new. Uh, three months going into the new year because we don't have our town meeting until March. So that's a, that's a standard one. Uh, and most of these are. Well, these are the general government articles that we just went through. The only thing we added to it just to consolidate the number of articles is that we did, we put employee benefits in here uh, as opposed to leaving it as a separate article. But it's all, again, if you follow it, you can follow it in the town, the budget in the town report. Uh, the, uh, so that's that. Uh, these are all the protection accounts that we just talked about, uh, New Mountain Fire Station, uh, insurances, communications, police department. Uh, the next one is all of your recreation programs. Now, I did speak to it briefly, uh, but we are also asking to transfer 31000 and change in FEMA funding received in 2020 uh, to approve uh, any balance that's in that 17.5 right here into the narrow gauge maintenance account at the end of the year. So uh, to, in order to help move forward uh, a, a, a reserve there for capital, what will undoubtedly be uh, capital uh, expenses in the future. <coughs> this one here is we've been doing this for several years now. We've asked the, uh, the town to vote uh, to allow the authorized the Board of Selectmen to implement uh, a town lot forest management plan. The forest management plan is in the town report. Uh, and to use the proceeds from that plan uh, for purposes of forest management activities and maintenance improvements to the outdoor center public lot roads and trails. As you may know, uh, it is anticipated uh, right here, uh, 80,000 of these funds will be expended in 2021 for the continual outdoor center slash public lot trail bridge replacement program. We're replacing these, all of those wooden bridges, as you may know, with precast concrete panels, which will make these bridges last 
a long, long time, much more than the 10 years we're getting on hemlock breaches. So this should, I mean, these should last 50 years ago. So, and that's what we're doing with this. So, um, and it's been a very, we've had, it's been going incredibly well. We've probably got two or three more years of this, and we ate eight, eight bridges this year. They're, they're, not, they're, they're expensive, but you're done with them. Um, so in this one here, this is 50,000 for Recreation Endowment Reserve, which we talked about. And the, this year, we're planning, uh, we've got requests for just under 40,000. As we indicated, uh, mountain bike grants a matching, 15 grand, ATV club, they want to uh, buy a uh, uh, a kind of a, uh, not a fancy, but a, 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 an improved ATV that they can work on the trails with because they've been using their own, and, and this would be help facilitate their program. <coughs> we every year we've been giving uh, to its Longfellows Mountain Heritage Trails on a multi-use project that they that they're involved with in the area. Town matching funds for the outdoor association. We stock the fish there. If anybody's interested, you can fish, fly fish there. <laughs> so, and uh, hopefully people are taking advantage of that. It hasn't been used a lot, but uh, hopefully it'll be more so in the future. This is the airport project that we talked about previously that we're operating uh, 10,000 in an airport reserve. And then in addition to the regular operating, most of this is planned. Thanks. 16,000, 17,000, that 25 is the plan And again, <clears throat> the put money reserve towards a project that would be funded, uh, a taxing rate project that would be funded in the future. Uh, let's see here. Uh, these again match the, they match the expenses we just went through with the budget. So uh, nothing unusual here. Uh, again, these are the same things we just went through in terms of town buildings, recycling, transfer, station operation, all of these things that we normally, uh, operations we fund every year. This is the obligated debt that we just went through. In fact, Sugarloaf is giving, is, is will be uh, extending uh, 110000 to the town as their share of some of these, uh, uh, some of this uh, debt service. Uh, and CBA would be uh, giving us additional money also, uh, 11000 uh, towards the roof project. That's 50-50 uh, that we did, a 10-year note that we did to put a whole new roof and insulation on the roof of the AGC back up two or three years ago. Uh, and these are some of the other organizations that we're raising. Again, we, we've talked about these. Uh, these are the uh, following town programs. The, the, end, the town conference plan history committee. We talked transportation services we talked about. Now, this one needs a little explanation, but um, the town, as you may know, uh, has a five-year lease currently that expires in June with um, the with Sugarloaf to operate the outdoor center facilities, the outdoor center. Uh, funds between the town and the club. This is 50-50 money between the town and the club, and there's going to be some significant expenses uh, moving forward with new trail development. On, in, on the state Wyman lot and into the Crocker Mountain, uh, state of Crocker Mountain uh, parcel in Caravasta Valley. So that fund, that, those funds will be needed uh, to develop additional mountain bike trails. So, so these are, uh, again, on pretty much there's the uh, 50 yard shooting range that they just didn't, the CBOA just didn't get to last year. So that's money that's available for them to, uh, for that project. And they have to match that as well. Okay, so, uh, and then these are ongoing things that we just discussed. Uh, and let's see. Dave, maybe that history committee could say that it's go ahead. now. Go uh, John, go for it. <laughs> it's uh, the first chapter or two are, are uh, published and ready to go. I think they're on the website now, right? I believe they are. I, yep. I, I, I don't want to, if they're not, if they're not, they will be soon. I, okay. I think they may be, though. You're right. The committee hired a lady named Ginny Wright, who was the editor of Down East Magazine, who's doing one heck of a job categorizing and cataloging our great community's history. It's pretty exciting. And our committee chair is Bob's mother, Jean Luce, who's done a magnificent <laughs> job in guiding us. So just a little FYI there. So uh, going forward, these are some revenues that we use against the tax, the 2.6 uh, 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 appropriations to reduce the tax bill, uh, the, the tax amendment. We also give some field productions, 30% uh, of the revenues from the franchise fees we get to help operate the town's uh, marketing promotional program. They basically are a public access channel. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, and so that pretty much explains the warrant. Um, 
And again, you'll be uh, asked to vote on that on April 14th, or you can vote absentee starting tomorrow on March 16th. You can take it home, the ballot home with you, whatever you wish to do. Good job. Right. That's enough. I tried to be as brief as possible. You did good. Good. Now I, I think I would open it up to anybody that wants to call in with any questions. Um, hopefully, there, hopefully there will be some, but. Yeah, and feel free to call me or one of the selectmen if it's, you know, call or us. Stop the, in, or stop, stop in tomorrow, pick up the town report. Yep. And, yes. And you can pick up a ballot at the same yep. time from Wendy. Please, you know, take the time, you know. In this day and age where everything's instant, you know, I, I've been around a little bit in terms of town government goes, you know, this used to be a pretty important document. People would rush down the town office to pick it up. They should. You know, we've got plenty of copies. It's an opportunity once a year to to go through and understand the finances of the community. You live here. It's an opportunity to, to read what's going on. We have a lot of information in this thing from various town departments. Um, and so it's, you know, it's a good opportunity. This is on the website right now as we speak. So you don't even need to come down and pick one up. Uh, you can go on the town website and read the town report. And then if you've got any questions, uh, as Lloyd said, just call us. And uh, we'd be glad to try to answer any questions you may have. Good. We should have had prizes. Maybe somebody would call. Yeah, I think that would have been a good. Idea. <laughs> watch and win. Oh, Watching. We should have a watch and win. Watch and win. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you to WSKI for yes, for thanks. broadcasting tonight. Our friend Andy back there. Awesome job. Journey. Yes. All right. Another minute. We'll have a couple of minutes. Of, uh, Silence. Some more commercials. <laughs> more commercials. <laughs> no, actually, I, you know, we obviously we're all dealing with this, and we felt that this was the best way to have a public hearing, and at the same time give you all the information again in this book, and it's a referendum vote, which is unusual for us because we all look forward to the town meeting in the outdoor center every year, and this is just one of those years we can't do it. We were. I guess fortunate last year we we got it in just days before the whole place shut down, so we didn't have to deal with it last year. And a year ago today, yeah, the mountain and a lot of businesses up here closed. Yep. A year and ago today. A year ago today. Yep. Wow. March fifteenth. So wow. hopefully this won't happen again. Yes. You know, but I think I think Dave and his staff and everybody has, has kind of worked to get something that you can have in your hand. And quite frankly, you can have the ballot in your hand for a month if you want, but it gives you time to go through it and, and do the same thing you would do in the town uh, meeting normally and vote. And we encourage everybody to vote and just drop it off at the town office before April 14th. Correct. At what time? Uh, six to eight o'clock at uh, six eight. in the morning. No, eight, no, eight, eight in the morning six. to six at night. Okay. And yeah, you can't yeah. come in that day and vote, right? Uh, that day. That's yes, you can vote in person. If, and you come in in person, and the, uh, it'll be in the fire station here at the town office, the fire station here, uh, from eight in the morning till six in the evening, and polls will close at six in the evening. 